All right, in this lecture, we're going to talk about the distributed arrays package in Julia. Uh, so distributed arrays, for the most part, act like regular arrays. However, they're distributed across a network of processors. We've already learned about MPI, so you should have an idea about you know, the distribution of processors in a network. Uh, and the data is distributed across all of them, but it gives you access to array functions like summations that will be carried out in parallel. So uh, each of the individual processors will sum their, you know, their distributed parts, and then a reduction operation will be done automatically. It also gives you read-only access to data that is an off-processor data um, in a natural way through global indexing and we'll see that an example of that later um, but that way you can actually index into parts of the array that are owned by another processor and a communication operation will automatically be done to bring that data back to the process the calling processor um, so just gives it a way if you have array data structures it gives a way to do parallel distributed parallel uh, computations in a way that's familiar to uh, the way you would do other array operations. So you can see, you know, from the beginning here, distributed array constructors, they look basically just like the regular array constructors for creating an arrays of zeros. This would be 100 by 100 by 10, three-dimensional array, same for ones and random numbers, and uh, also the fill operator. So in this case, this array would be initially filled with whatever value is in stored in X. Yeah. We'll see some of these in, in action here through an example. So, um, yeah, of course, we have to import distributed arrays. We also, any, almost any time we're using distributed arrays, we'll import distributed from the standard library, and that gives us uh, access to these special functions like everywhere, which allows, you know, basically importing the distributed arrays namespace on all processors at once. So anywhere you see this everywhere, um, this is going to be basically uh, imported on all processors at the same time, similar to the way that an MPI program runs on all processors at the same time. So in this case, we're going to uh, create an array, the array of, of ones. The array will have uh, 10 entries and the distribution will be automatic. So how many ever processors we run, uh, this will automatically distribute them as equally as possible across all those processors. And so even though this is a distributed array, we can simply just call sum on it and the summation will be done in parallel. Um, I'm showing the result here, of course, if we have 10 numbers that are ones and we sum them up, we should get an answer 10. Um, and then just so we can look at the actual distribution, the parts that are distributed, uh, we have a, a function here that's going to print out the individual, um, uh, print out with some text, the individual parts of the array. So my ID gives the local processor number. Uh, this function local part of A will um, produce the local, you know, what's local to each individual processor. And in this case, I'm also multiplying by my ID. Um, you know, so this is an array of ones. If we multiply by the ID, it'll turn it into an array uh, that's filled with the, the local processor ID. Um, there's also this special function workers, which returns the, the number of worker processors, and I'll have more to say about that in a second. So if we save this code into a file and run it with Julia, this time we're gonna pass in the dash P flag to Julia, such that you know, this dash P will add this number of processors. And uh, I'll come back to that in just a second. So if we look at the results, uh, the sum of A is in fact 10 as we expect. And then you'll see the individual um, printouts from each of the uh, ranks. So we, it had 10 entries. Those get distributed across uh, three processors in this case. Uh, and so you have four entries on processor two, uh, three entries on processor three, and three entries on processor four. Now what you notice is that it, the processors that were specified here, three, are the only ones that are printed. And so what you don't notice is the, the one processor 
where this program is initiated from, where the Julie REPL is run. That processor, the processor one, is not included in workers. There's a different function for that. We'll see that on the next slide. So the auto, the, the, the normal way of distributing, if we use, just use the default constructor, is it's gonna distribute to all the processors you add. In this case, there'll be three processors that we're adding as workers, and there's one kind of boss processor where the Julie Rebel is running, and the normal distribution, uh, if you don't pass in any additional arguments to these constructors, is to distribute only to the worker processors. So we're kind of wasting a processor here, but that's not doing any work, uh, the one that's running the Ju Julia REPL. And so we can basically run the same code again. You see, this time we're gonna give it a, a couple of additional arguments that will control the distribution, right? So in this case, we're filling uh, an array with the, with the number 20. Uh, it's gonna have 10 elements. This time we're gonna distribute it instead of just to workers, we're gonna explicitly distribute it to, to the argument uh, or the, the result of running prox. And prox will return an array of the processor numbers. And this includes the, the one processor, the one that uh, the Julia REPL is running on. So this distribution of the data will actually have as part of the data that runs on the one rank processor. And this last argument, here, so the, the, the second, the third argument here is the uh, is a vector of the processor numbers, and the last argument is a is a vector that specifies the distribution along each axis. So in this case, we only have one axis; it's a one-dimensional vector that's going to have ten elements in it, and so um, we're going to distribute it across the number of processors, which in this case will be four. Uh, well, I'm sorry, it, it'll be whatever we specify on the command line, I think in the example I have four. Um, same print line as before. We'll go ahead and run this. And then again, as you see, um, we're adding three processors. So three plus one, the one that Julie REPL is running on, and now we'll have four processors. And you can see again, now processor one uh, does have a part of the, uh, the dis distributed array, right? So originally the array was filled with 20s. And then in this case, I'm multiplying by my ID. So 20 times one is just 20. But over here, 20 times two for rank two would be uh, 40, uh, three, 60, and 80. So we can also create distributed arrays from local arrays. So if we have a local array, in this case, just the numbers one to 10, we can then just call distribute on it, and we can also specify the distribution here. So again, we're gonna distribute it to all processors uh, with, with the distribution being that uh, even along one axis, right, number of processors. So in this case, uh, again, we're gonna print out the local parts of each one, but we're also going to uh, sum um, the third element and the fourth element. And I chose those specifically for a reason. We'll see that in just a second. So if we save this to a file and run it, again, adding three processors when we, when we call uh, so that there are to four total. Um, here you can see the distributed array, one, two, three on processor one, four, five, six on processor two, seven, eight on processor three, and nine, 10 on processor four. Now, what I wanted to show here is that, you know, we're adding the third, the third element and the fourth element, which are in two different processors, right? And uh, we can do this, you know, basically just by indexing into the array, uh, even though some of the data is on off processor uh, for call. And this will, you know, do the summation across the processors as well as uh, print it to the screen on the, on the one processor only, right? So uh, three is this element of B and four is this element of B. So if we sum those up, we get seven. So the distributed arrays package also has an interface for single program, multiple data. Um, so this provides an MPI-like interface where essentially the, you can tag functions to be run on every processor. And then you have some explicit, you know, send to, receive from, barrier, broadcast, scatter, gather commands. These are, should be familiar since we've already talked about MPI. It just gives us a little bit simpler interface to those functions for arrays. So uh, here's an example of what we're gonna do here. 
Uh, we define a function and we tag it with uh, everywhere macro, which uh, forces it to run on all processors or be defined on all processors. Um, and in this case, you know, it takes two arguments, just a, a send buffer and then a receive buffer. Uh, that's going to be basically modified in place. And we'll call the scatter command passing in the send buffer from the one processor. There is a special symbol here uh, that I'm using for indexing into the receive buffer. And that is this colon L. That just means the local part. So basically take the result of scatter and put it into the local part of the receive buffer. So uh, in this case, we'll go ahead and, and define a send buffer as just a number from one to the number of processors. Um, and then for the receive buffer, this is just sort of a catch-all uh, array type that, or distributed data type that is going to have as many entries as there are um, number of processors. So when we then run this, we call it with the SPMD, which comes from the uh, this distributed dot SMP uh, PMD namespace. Um, we pass in the function. And the arguments to the function follow, send buff, receive buff. Uh, we're running it on all the processors available. And then we'll print out what's in the receive buff. So um, running it on four processors, which again means five total. Right? We're adding four to the one that's running the Julia REPL. Um, and again, uh, so we, you know, that would mean that this just becomes an array from one to five. And the result of that scatter command is stuffing this into this distributed data uh, data structure, which by default take is like the any vector container. And so um, we, we put that in there, uh, the result. So basically we're just scattering this to all the processors. Uh, it's collected into this data structure and then it's printed to the screen on the rank zero processor on this last command. So that's just a quick introduction to some of the things you can do with uh, distributed arrays. But the, the main idea is that these are arrays that are distributed across processors, but you can act, access them and use them as if they were regular arrays. So this is a very convenient way to do parallel programming on array data structures uh, with little to no uh, you know, extra syntax over what you would do to write a serial program.